When Chauncey Bailey was gunned down in Oakland, California nearly two years ago, his killing <laughs> shook up his city and his profession. The reporter got his head blown off. It's that simple. Bailey was editor of the weekly Oakland Post. He was investigating a black Muslim splinter group, allegedly using a local bakery as a front for criminal activities when he was shot. You can't let that go unanswered because what happens to the next reporter who's investigating a story that someone doesn't want him to, to report? But at a time when newsrooms and news budgets are shrinking, some feared Chauncey Bailey's work might go unfinished. So with some foundation support, two dozen news organizations agreed somewhat reluctantly to collaborate. Collaboration was something we shied away from, really, because it was get the story, get it first, and scoop somebody. The reporters who joined forces on the Chauncey Bailey Project admit putting aside competition wasn't always easy. And if you have secret sources, are you going to share them with all the people in this room? Well, yeah. But that was hard. <laughs> yeah, there's been a few chairs thrown. <laughs> Their work was low budget. Two of the three lead reporters didn't have jobs. Bob Butler laid off from radio. Mary Fricker retired. But on story after story, they pressed the police investigation. Their reporting revealed links between the lead detective on the case and the black Muslim group's leader, Yusuf Bey. Last month, the detective was suspended. The big breakthrough came when the reporters obtained a secretly recorded jailhouse video of Bay and found something detectives had missed. They heard Bay whispering he had the gun used to kill Bailey. The gun that was used was in my closet. That admission became headline news. It gets the message out and it sends the message that investigative reporting is still alive. Finally, two years after the killing, Bay has been indicted for Chauncey Bailey's murder. He'll be arraigned tomorrow. For the reporters, getting results became more important than getting a scoop, a team effort that would have made the slain journalist proud. John Blackstone, CBS News, San Francisco.